Welcome. All right. Well, hey, everybody. Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me. I got a vapey thing that I wanted to talk with you about today. This is the Blitz Enterprises Ghoul RDA. Ooh, the Ghoul. I don't know why I did that. Um, It's called the Ghoul RDA. It's a 22 millimeter atomizer. It comes with a squonk pin. You can use it as a dripper. It's a very cool single coil sort of ceramic clamp build deck that is, I mean, the most effortless deck possibly that I've ever installed coils on. It truly is insanely simple to use, but we're going to get to all of that in a second because what we're going to do right now in order to get to know this atomizer just a little bit better is go up close as we often do that's right quick short upy closey time go <clears throat> All right, yeehaw, we're going to take a quick look at this Ghoul RDA. Like, you know, look at that 510 pin on the bottom. Yeah, that's nice. That's a nice protruding static 510 pin. Kind of see it's this it's this odd shape. It's a little bit of an odd, weird, roundy shape engraved on the front. Ghoul RDA. 810 compatible drip tip, although my favorite DHD nub tips don't quite fit in here as well as I want them to. But you come with this, it comes with this clear one, kind of sort of knurled. It's a little bit textured. And mine also came with this sort of uh, honeycomb-y looking, whiz looking pattern as well. Two airflow slots, one there and one there, although this one is covered up, and that'll make a lot more sense once we look at the deck. But for a Squonk RDA, that airflow is, it's low. It's a, it's a really low airflow for a Squonker, in my opinion. And then there's the deck on the inside, so you can see there's your airflow right there, and then you have another airflow over here that is split. Your air goes in and to the sides around your post. Post, and then this one, it just goes directly in and hits your coils. Now, I know this is a squonk RDA, but my two spare pins are not squonk pins. That is a flat pin right there. And that is a flat pin right there. Mine seem to not include a squonk pin, but even without having the actual squonk pin, you can see, yeah, the squonk pin's gonna go right there. It's gonna squonk juice up into the deck. Although I still think these airflows are a little bit low for a squonk RDA. When you're flooding that deck with juice, you don't want any of that juice coming out the holes and low set holes like this eh, sometimes have the tendency to leak, but they do include this Blitz key tool to unscrew your single screw to put your coil in. This is a ceramic style clamp system here. It's not spring loaded in any way, but it's very, very easy to build and I'm just gonna build it very, very quickly right in front of you. Got a Fiends Alien frame staple 0.09 to 0.11 and in a single coil, you should have much higher resistance than that. It's really terribly simple to install a coil. Your leads can just push up the ceramic. You just drop them in like this. That's literally all there is to it. I just take my tool and I kind of make sure that my coil is kind of centered in the middle of the deck. And then you can use the Blitz key tool to just screw this back down. Or a flathead screwdriver works the exact same way. Boom. That's it. Clip your leads. Your coil is installed. Starting out with a 0.26 and that'll probably change once we start glowing these. But we're going to glow these coils and get them glowing nice and evenly real quick. And let's turn down that wattage. <laughs> Yeah, super simple, glowing nice and evenly. Yeah, that's pretty, that's beautiful. That's what you wanna see. Final resistance check, 0.44. Okay, I didn't exactly trust that Minikin's resistance because it kept jumping around all over the place, but I put it on a DNA 250 and it's consistently at 0.23 now for that single coil, which makes a lot more sense. Couldn't be easier to build and all we need to do right now is wick it. So simple. It's built. It's wicked. The coil is hovering above the air flows. I'm just going to juice this up. We're just going to get back out to normal view. We're going to vape this guy.
rocking, rocking. So yeah, that's the Ghoul RDA, up close and personal. It's weird, you know, it, it just looks weird. I'm not in love with the styling of this. I like that it's 22 millimeters, but I don't like the bulgy outer top cap of it. I think it just, I don't know. I think it just looks real weird. I'm also not super in love with the engraving on this. It's got like that big skull with the crossed mods and it says ghoul across the bottom and it looks kind of... Nah, I, I, I kind of just wish it wasn't there. It's kind of just not for me. And I opted to use, personally, the stainless steel version because on the black version, it's etched in there even deeper. You have this dark matte black badass looking atomizer with this very shiny, you know, carved on there, sort of etched on their skull with the crossed mods and it says ghoul. And I just, to me personally, I, I don't like the way that looks. It's just not for me. Talking about the vape experience, that I get from this atomizer though, it, it's great. It is top notch. The airflow isn't super smooth. It's not as smooth as I would like, but it's not really turbulent by any means. There's a little bit of resistance. It's kind of a, a restricted lung hit. And really what I was worried more about in this atomizer was if it was if the airflow is going to feel even because you have one airflow hole that is just completely open to the outside, nothing blocking it, and it just goes right underneath your coil and then on the other side, your airflow has to split around the post. And I was very worried that the open airflow, I would be able to feel it more than the other side. I just didn't want it to feel uneven. I didn't want to feel like I was getting more airflow from one hole than the other. Thankfully, that is not the case. It does feel very even, which is a, a huge relief. If this airflow didn't feel even, if I felt like I was getting substantially more airflow out of one hole than the other, that would have been a, a huge con in my book. But you don't get that. You just get nice, even, swooshy airflow. It's a little bit restricted and it's just a hair rough. I wouldn't say that it's turbulent, but it's a little, little, hey, I mean, this is really nitpicky. It feels a little bit rough when you're vaping it. But overall, I really enjoy the vape experience I get from this atomizer. I like the airflow. I like the flavor that I get from it. And it feels like a very dense, saturated vape. And I know that I throw those words out there constantly. I mean, all the time I say things like dense and saturated and, and you know, warm vape. But this is very much a saturated vape. It feels very very saturated to me, and I find it to be a, a very enjoyable experience overall. Now, if we're gonna talk real quick about the flavor, the flavor's fine, the flavor's good. It's not amazing, it's not gonna like change your life. You're not suddenly going to be able to taste the subtle nuances of your juice that much better, but I've got this loaded up with Surf Satisfying. It's a juice that I have vaped a lot of, and it tastes completely delicious in this atomizer. I can absolutely taste my juice. So like I was saying earlier, Mine didn't come with a squonk pin, but it doesn't take a rocket surgeon to see that, yeah, your squonk pin's gonna go in the bottom, you're gonna have a little hole, you're gonna be able to squonk your juice, and you're gonna be able to flood the deck. And when you're doing that, when you're squonking, or when you're dripping, you just need to be careful with how much juice you're putting in this atomizer. It's got that airflow that's set really low. I feel like it's set a little bit too low, like excessively low. If this was just a few millimeters down, it could almost have been like Kennedy style airflow. It's that low. So when you're squonking, just be a little bit more careful, or if you're dripping on it, just be a little bit more careful. You don't wanna go crazy and flood this deck because there is a high, high probability that juice is going to come out of that airflow hole just because they're so low. So like I said, I've been dripping on this and it's it's a joy to drip on. I love looking down the barrel of my atomizer right through the drip tip and just seeing the coil right there. And you can just blay your juice and you know it's going directly. It's just hitting directly on your coil. And having that coil right there underneath your drip tip is, uh, I don't know, I feel like it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. Having your coil right there, especially after you freshly squonked or freshly dripped and there's some juice on your coil, it does, for a few toots, create a little bit of spit back. It's certainly not like a deal breaker. It's not enough to make me not want to use this atomizer. It's kind of just something to be aware of. Yeah, when it's really freshly wet, it does get 
get a little bit spitty, and that's just because of the positioning of the coil. One thing they did include in that baggie is a little ceramic clamp, which I, I like to see. I like to see that, but it also kind of makes me wonder, well, how long is this ceramic clamp going to last? I've probably put... I don't know, five or six builds in this, and it doesn't show any signs of wear. You know, there's no like hairline fractures or cracks in the ceramic. Ceramic certainly isn't, you know, uh, indestructible. So I'm assuming over time, given enough force and given enough builds that it might start to wear down and crack and scuff maybe. Or if you're being very careless and you and you drop your deck on the ground and it kind of lands on that ceramic, like I said, ceramic isn't indestructible. It's, it's going to break and it's going to crack at some point. So thankfully they did include a spare clamp. Now all the weird stuff aside, the deck is the one thing that I really do love about this atomizer. I have not had a build installed in my, in my atomizer that effortlessly, I don't know, maybe ever. It's one screw to screw down and it clamps your leads down. It just works really well. I think it's a really great design. Yeah, just overall having a really good time with this atomizer. I love the vape that I get from it. I just wish it didn't look so dumb. Now really, are you gonna need your vape budget hands for this? Uh, kinda not at all. Clicking around the internet, I found it anywhere from 25 to $30. I saw that Vapor DNA had it for $24.99, which at that price point, it's almost inexpensive enough to just buy it, just to try it out. Now, if we're gonna play the Aliens game, or the FDA game where they come and take all of my vape gear and I have nothing left to vape. Is the Ghoul RDA something I would seek out and buy? It's actually kind of a complicated answer because there's parts of this RDA that I really truly love and there's parts of this RDA that I could really do without. The deck, I love, I love the deck. I think for $25, the deck alone is worth the price of admission. Like I had said earlier, I have not had an easier, simpler, more effortless experience building an RDA than I have with this Ghoul RDA. It's just so simple. I don't like the way it looks, as we've discussed. I don't like the engraving on the front, as we discussed. And I wish, I wish with all of my wishes that that airflow was set up a little bit higher. All things considered, if they kept this the exact same way it was, wonky look and all, but they raised that airflow up a little bit, I would be much more, much more inclined to purchase this atomizer. As it stands right now, I love the deck and I love the vape I get from it. I don't love the way it looks and I don't love the real low airflow. Anyway, too much rambling. I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to throw some links down in the description to where you can check out the Ghoul RDA if you're interested, but that's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, yeah, let's keep on vaping.